Hey there fellow chicken keepers. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions from people asking us how our roosters are so nice and why they don't attack us. As you probably well know, there's a lot of uh, people out there who are dealing with, you know, various issues that might be uh, classified as aggression or meanness. Um, so we wanted to take a, a few minutes today we just wanted to take a few minutes today and go over, you know, some of those um, some of those issues and, and maybe where they're actually stemming from and um, some of the misinformation that is so commonly spread out there that uh, honestly just seems to make the problems worse. <laughs> Ginger Grease. <laughs> so probably one of the biggest problems that we see people talk about with chicken keeping in general is struggles and difficulties with roosters. Uh, the people who choose to keep them often find themselves dealing with problems. We see a ton of posts in the communities that we're part of, of people just at their wits end because they've tried everything, they don't know how to fix the problems they're having, and we have some observations that we think we can share that will be helpful. The main thing to think about when it comes to rooster aggression is what's actually causing it. One of the things that we see... <coughs> One of the things that we see all the time is people reporting that their roosters are attacking them for no reason. That just nothing prompted it came out of the blue. It can definitely look that way uh, from our perspective. One thing that's really important to remember is something always did. When a rooster attacks, that's their way of communicating that something is making them feel threatened, insecure, afraid, or they may even just be sick. There could be so many causes, but there always is one. So the first thing that we always want to try to do when we're dealing with any kind of aggressive behavior is do our absolute best to pinpoint what are they trying to tell us, what's actually putting them ill at ease, and that's what's going to guide how we address it, what we can do to help them settle down, to help them understand that they're safe. Another thing that we see mentioned so often relating to um, the, the roosters attacking for no reason uh, is, is that People's roosters tend to be so nice as, as young birds, and then just out of nowhere, they flip a switch and suddenly become mean. And it's easily explainable, it's rooster puberty. Uh, their hormones are surging, they honestly have very little control over themselves, and when something strikes them as a threat or um, you know, concerning or even confusing, um, their brain does flip a switch and tends to, um, what would you say, go into a <laughs> sort of triggered response. Um. Right. There's a term for it, actually. Um, it's called fixed action behavior. So it's basically, it's a shortcut that the brain takes when it feels like there isn't enough time or a, enough experience with that situation to make a conscious decision. So this is kind of tying into the fight or flight response. It's when an animal feels that if they take too much time to think about how to react, they might wind up dead. So the subconscious takes over, they check out, the lights are on but nobody's home, and they are just controlled through this series of actions, essentially until the end of that action chain. This is one reason it can look like they pull such a 180, they go insane saying it's like you're not dealing with the same bird in a weird way you're not they're being controlled by that instinct um, this is one reason that once that's set off the best thing you can do honestly is just to not react let everything just take a moment to stop to settle down let them exhaust themselves exhaust that response so that they can see that nothing bad is happening if you try to fight back or you run from them that's only going to fuel that intensity and that energy um, so especially during puberty because they have these hormones fueling all of that it's just cranked up to 100. it's really not very different than human puberty where you'll see teenagers responding to you know really fairly mild situations as though it's the end of the world so in the same way that a parent might feel like their teen is acting crazy during that time, rooster keepers often feel like their birds have gone a little crazy during that time. Um, it will calm down, that one will improve just on its own, just as long as we don't do anything during that time to actually train them to feel threatened or to train them to dislike our presence. So that does bring us back to one of the main topics of this video and that is... <coughs> a lot of the... 
a lot of the common knowledge, traditional knowledge that gets passed around more often than not, um, that honestly we found tends to do more harm than good. Um, many keepers believe that many keepers believe that if you dominate or intimidate your rooster, that that means that they will wind up respecting you or somehow being less aggressive. Um, but when you actually dive into it, you can look into you know research studies and other people's personal experiences as well as our own. And the fact of the matter is that dominating or intimidating has exactly the same effect on roosters that you would think it would have on you. Um, for example, pinning a rooster to you know show it that you're dominant. Um, is not only going to make him feel threatened by you, but it's going to sort of place you in that pecking order. It's going to it's going to make you a rooster when in fact you don't want to be viewed as another rooster. Yeah, absolutely. So the dominance training is something that people recommend quite a lot, and in in a way it can have an effect. You do see people report that it has lessened their issues, but the problem really comes. <laughs> to what we're trying to do when we do that. The reason this gets recommended is because it's thought to be communicating to the rooster that he is not above you. It does do this, but the problem is, and we can attest to this because we have this flock of four roosters and we see their social dynamics on a daily basis, we have pecking order change-ups regularly. So, for instance, May May here was our original head roo. He kept that position for, what would you say, maybe? The first year. Yeah, for a while before Ginger decided to compete for that spot. <laughs> Ginger has now taken over, and we've even seen some signs of Morgan here in my lap trying to take over that position. So those birds that have had it proven to them that they're lower and that they need to respect and defer, they only do it for so long. They'll accept that loss and they'll walk on eggshells for a time, but eventually they have that instinct that they want to be the boss, they want to be the leader. And as soon as they rebuild that confidence, they're going to get it. <laughs> They're going to give it another takeover attempt. So you um, can win temporarily. I like to say this is one of those cases where you might win the battle, but the war is continuing. And they are going to come back, and they're going to try it again. And if, real quick, if we think about that logically, um, they're with the flock 24-7, and we are not. Um, we shouldn't want to be the head rooster. Um, you know, we can't be there to defend the hens when something breaks into the coop overnight. Um, we, we really do want them to be the rooster, and for us to be a completely separate entity with a completely different relationship to them, um, because, you know, a rooster should be the one taking care of its flock. Right, yeah. we're a support system, if we're being honest. We're there to help assist them in their role, and we're only really a part-time caregiver. It's another thing that we've observed with our bachelor flock mm -hmm. and that a lot of other keepers have reported too, is that between roosters, the pecking order change-up can happen in as little as 24 hours apart. If you miss a couple of days of getting out to that coop and run, they're going to already be thinking of maybe being able to move up and overtake you. So one reason this gets recommended so often is because there's kind of a myth that roosters are only capable of understanding dominance or submission, that there's just nothing else accessible to them. Um, this would be kind of like with dogs, for instance, or even cats. Dogs are an animal that runs in a pack. They have a hierarchy, but they also are able to form an actual friendship and a bond. <laughs> with their human keepers. Cats, on the other hand, are notoriously solitary in the wild, but are still able to bond closely to humans. So it's true that within the flock, that is basically where everyone's coming from. Am I above or below you? But that doesn't mean that a rooster isn't capable of understanding a new kind of relationship if we make that opportunity available yeah. to them. They're definitely smart enough to understand we are not chickens. Um, <laughs> Which kind of brings us to, you know, another point, and that is that we have more information now than we used to. Um, you know, all this traditional information that gets spread around so commonly comes from our ancestors who didn't have the internet, they didn't have the time to really <coughs> sit and research on their own the psychology of their chickens. They were focused on survival and whatever was most efficient is what they did. That's why it's, ne it's never been a big deal to you know, maybe lose a chicken here or there because it can just be replaced. But these days, since we have 
the information and the connectivity to be able to share it, um, we can know better. Um, and studies have been done, oh, you know, many studies have been done, um, most recent ones proving that uh, chickens have the, what would you say, general intelligence level of a seven-year-old human. Um, they're capable of remembering, you know, names and faces and commands and um, they have preferences and emotions and, you know, um, they can form bonds and they're excellent at deductive reasoning. Like, you know, a lot, a lot of the same traits that many people know parrots have or even like crows and ravens, um, uh, intelligent birds that we, we wouldn't treat this way um, and yet somehow uh, chickens just flew under the radar. But. Right, exactly. Well, and so much of that kind of training, it's it's almost like we're bringing about the problem because we're we're sending them a message that we never needed to send in the first place. Um, like we were talking about with puberty, sometimes you'll see that really rambunctious behavior, you know, the wing dancing and the nipping mm -hmm. at hands and all kinds of things that are misunderstood as aggression even though they're really not. So you have a bird at that point who isn't trying to challenge you, isn't actually trying to compete with you. They're honestly not really very sure yet what they're doing. Um, but when we respond in that way that they understand to mean I am above you, I am your rival, they may be a bit confused, but they're probably going to go along with that. They're probably going to say, all right, I guess this is our relationship. One of the things that we committed to with our boys, um, honestly, at the start, just hoping for the best, was that we were never going to punish, dominate, chase, uh, kick, hit, spray, any of these things. That if they were doing something that was undesirable, uncomfortable, challenging, which they did as they were getting older, <laughs> they definitely definitely had those moments, um, but we just always made it our focus to watch closely, to troubleshoot, to try to, as best we could, get to the bottom of what they were trying to say by that, and then work on supporting them, building up their environment to ensure that they could see whatever it is they need to see, whether that was security, safety, <coughs> reliability. So there's, there's a few things that we could discuss that are the real drivers for aggressive behavior and they're not what most people think. One of the all too common misconceptions is that when our rooster attacks us it's because um, they don't like us or um, you know they're, they're just mean and there, there really are a lot of reasons a rooster will respond that way and none of them are really because um, they're mean. Unfortunately, some of them might be because they don't like you, but, <laughs> but we can fix that. Um, and that's all based on how we choose to respond to them. So when your rooster um, acts up or lashes out, uh, when he charges you, kicks you, bites you, whatever it is, um, the best thing we can do is pause, not react. We can, you know, armor up and, and defend ourselves as best we can, but that doesn't mean hitting back, it doesn't mean causing any harm to them. Um, we want to show them that we are not what they need to be afraid of, and if they are, we need to be persistent and prove it to them that they can trust us. Um, when we really stop and take a look at what might be causing um, the rooster to, to behave that way, some of the things could be as simple as the color of your shirt, the color of your shoes, the color of your pants, you get my point. Um, it could be the bagginess of your pants, it could be a pattern on your jacket, it could be the rake you're holding, it could be a number of things that typically wouldn't, you know, occur to us as humans. Um, we, we tend to just think like, you know, what's the big deal? Like, I'm not afraid of it, why is the chicken freaking out? But it really is that simple, you know, I. I fill the chicken's feeders with a, uh, a used Folgers uh, coffee can, and it's red. And this boy here absolutely hates that thing, but as soon as I turn it a little bit so that he can see the food inside, he's all about taking the food right out of it. Um, but it's something so simple as, you know, the color red or the particular shape, and it can just set them off. And it's not that they're being mean at all, uh, they're just distrusting of that object or that situation, and as long as we can be patient enough to, to figure out what that real cause is, then we can help them come to a, a, an understanding <coughs> and a feeling of security from that point on. 
Yeah, with birds in general, but especially prey animal birds, um, it, security is just everything to them. They live their lives in a constant state of potential danger, potential harm. They are constantly watching for any indication that something might be a threat. So we want to try to establish these predictable routines so they know what to expect, when to expect it, how to expect it to happen. If we need to divert from that, and sometimes we do, we want to do that in as gentle, as reassuring a way as possible. And we want to go into it anticipating that they might misunderstand what we're doing. They might react badly. That really shouldn't be held against them. It's something they honestly can't help. And sometimes those solutions are a lot more simple than you might think. Um, okay. <laughs> that was just a, a sense of a threat. I think yeah. it might have been a shadow moving just outside. Um, and if I could, actually, though, I think that actually is a nice segue into another thing uh, that we get asked very, very often, and that is, how, how do we train our roosters to be so nice? <laughs> and Given everything we've said, I think the answer is really simple. It's less about training the birds and more about retraining ourselves to respond differently to their behavior. Um, if we can do that, if we can you know, develop a little bit more patience and a little bit more compassion and empathy, um, and we can take the time to figure out what's stressing them out, um, not only will we be able to remove that stressor and allow them to feel more comfortable, but they will return that to you, you know, tenfold. They'll be so appreciative that that will strengthen the bond you have with them. They will trust you even more for it. They'll understand you're wanting to help and to make them comfortable. And that is invaluable. Yeah. I mean, whether, you, whether you're keeping them as a pet or livestock, uh, think about having to treat your chicken. Whether you're keeping them as a pet or livestock, it's a nightmare having to, you know, chase down and wrangle a chicken that doesn't want to be caught. But if you can develop a relationship, you know, that's like this, where they just trust you completely, um, they also become entirely cooperative. We've had multiple chickens now that um, have needed to come in for something or another, some treatment or another, and they, they seem to just completely understand that what we're doing is to help them, even if it's not pleasant for them, even if we have to hold them still, um, they, they, they tend to just be cooperative. And, my gosh, that's what a what a helpful thing. It makes it so much easier. It's so much. It's so worth the time we put in, you know, getting to know them and sort of um, figuring out what what would make them most comfortable. Right. So it definitely it may sound like this could be something that's going to take a whole lot more time, you know, than just shooing them away with a rake. Um, it may take slightly more time, mostly it's just going to take more understanding and patience. It takes a lot of time to get to the bottom of what's actually making them tick, but we're fortunate to live in a time where we have access to all of this information. We don't, every last one of us, have to go out there and spend hours and hours and hours like Jane Goodall studying our flocks. We can benefit from the others who have spent that time, the people who have worked through really severe aggression issues successfully and wound up with an attached and bonded rooster. Um, one thing that I like to point out when trying to help other people in these online communities is that if these common recommendations like the chasing and hitting and all of that were so effective, you wouldn't see so many people having trouble. Everyone knows that that's something they can do, and it's one of the things most people unfortunately do try, but they still wind up having problems. So clearly there is something more needed here. There is some other way. The people who are forming those close bonds are the ones to ask about this, not the people who tried the common recommendations and saw them fail. In any endeavor, you want to ask the people who did it, the people who have actually seen that success, what they did, how they did it, so that you can replicate it. So the biggest thing that we've learned with these boys is that it's really never spite. It may be confusion, it may be discomfort. Maelstrom here gets really antsy when it's a very windy day, when the weather's been nasty. He just gets frayed nerves. Um, he's also the one who frequently will chase and try to peck and even kick at my shoes if I move wrong around him. One really interesting thing I've found with him is that if as soon as he runs up and he stands tall and he's preparing to kick, if I catch him and I just say, it's a good boy, Mimi, that's a good boy, and talk very reassuringly and tell him he's doing a good job, he will literally stop, he'll think for a moment, he'll look at me, and then he'll just walk away. Um, if I get frustrated, 
frustrated, if I get at all impatient or go, oh, Maelstrom, it's fine, he'll often go on into a kick. There's something about just being reassured, just being told, you did your job, you're okay, everything's taken care of. Um, it really does seem like he's simply misunderstanding the situation. So getting that reassurance that everything is in order, his work there is done, he can relax, is invaluable to him. He's a super cuddly rooster. If you've been watching our videos for very long, you know that he's incredibly affectionate. But he's also a little anxious. He's also a little bit more prone than the others to panicking over things. So it's not a question of meanness, it's just a question of ability to cope, really. Yeah. So why still so much tradition? A big part of that is because it works a little. Uh, what it's going to do if you're lucky, um, some people are unlucky, what it's going to do if you're lucky is it's going to teach your rooster either to be afraid enough of you to just give you your distance and you're just not going to have that interaction come up because they're so busy avoiding you. Um, that's an adequate solution for some people, but again, it doesn't address you know that issue of what if you have to evacuate, there's a fire, you have to catch them. What if you need to treat them? What if you need to administer something to them for a contagious illness in the flock? Um, there are just better ways to go about it. So even when it works, it really isn't working as well as it could. There's also a danger with some roosters who are a little more bold than others. It's only going to prompt them to double down. They're going to be encouraged that there's a fight, and they're not going to give up quickly. This is why you hear a lot of people report that they tried it, but they got worse. And that's those bad eggs, mm -hmm. roosters that just can't be fixed. Right. Usually it is chalked up to just that rooster being unsolvable. That's not what was going on. There are things that would work, but they would have taken more tailoring to get to the root of the issue. But the long and short of it is really just that those traditional methods will maybe improve things some, but they are going to leave you open to additional problems and they're not going to improve them fully. Well, and sort of to summarize, the reason that those methods keep getting used is because people don't know that there are alternatives. They feel like the only choice they have is they can either continue to be attacked or they can alienate their rooster. They don't realize that there's a third way because that doesn't get talked about very much. A lot of people are really quick to quit and don't really go seeking out that information. It isn't that it's hard to do. It's just that you have to not just apply a blanket approach. Um, so getting into the topic of what to do to help your rooster settle down, how to make them calm, how to make them friendly, that's really going to depend on a lot of variables. One reason that you don't see this kind of advice spread around a lot is that it takes more into consideration than just a simple swift kick. It's going to involve more nuance. Every, every bird is an, an individual. Every animal is an individual with their own personality and preferences, etc. Um, we know this about, like I said again, parrots. We know this about parrots. We know this about dogs and cats and every other commonly kept pet. But if we just applied it to roosters, we, we could see the, the logic in it that truly not everyone is the same. And if you can do that, then you have just massively increased your chances of finding what's wrong and being able to fix it. Right. And so when we're applying those kind of one size fits all solutions, you know, something like pinning because they're um, they're acting crazy, they're acting on edge, they're treating you as a threat. If they are actually challenging you, maybe that will send the message you're trying to send. But if they're afraid that a predator is going to come around because they saw one last night near the coop, if they're feeling sick, if any of these other things are going on, if they're afraid, that is not going to help. That's going to make things far worse, and it's only going to confirm that anxiety for them, that something is after them and that they can't relax. So it really is, it's crucial to understand what you're dealing with and what you're trying to target target with any of this. I'll often tell people too that really with roosters the biggest thing you can do is not do the wrong things. It's a lot more about not doing the wrong things than it is about doing any one magical right thing. Um, so when you're dealing with any kind of aggression in your bird, the first thing you're going to want to look for is rule out the list of issues that might prompt aggression. Give them a once-over. Make sure they don't have parasites. Make sure there's no injuries you haven't identified. If you have a coop cam, review your footage from the night before the behavior change and see if anything happened that you're not aware of. Um, there's all kinds of explanations, but knowing that potential cause is going to help you know where to get started. 
one thing that is universal is that attacking, threatening, punishing is never going to put any living being at ease. It just isn't. So you want to make sure that anytime you're around them, your presence is as reassuring, as pleasant, as welcome as possible. You want to really project out there that you are somebody who cares about them, you're a friend, you're somebody that they can trust being around them and their girls if they have them. Um, that's going to be the fastest way to reduce any of these anxieties and apprehensions they get. And you're probably going to still see some come up from time to time, like we deal with with Maymay here, uh, with the shoes, gloves, he hates too. Um, we just have to see that, recognize that anxiety, and limit that factor in his day-to-day -day life, or be strategic if we're going to have to use it. If I have to use gloves, I make sure he's occupied before I go to reach for something, for instance. A lot of it can just simply be minimized. Another way to put, you know, all of that is we have to be willing to be open to change. We have to be willing to be open to, you know, learning new things and doing things differently than, than what we've heard before. And so getting back to the, um, the necessary response for various issues with aggression, um, I wish I could give just a, again, a one-size-fits-all, do this and your rooster will be nice. The best I can do as far as addressing everything right now is just to ask yourself how you would feel in their position and ask yourself what would put you at ease? What kind of reaction and response would help you to calm down? It may seem like they're radically different than us, but when it comes to issues like security, safety, uh, feeling comforted, they're really not very different than we are. So that'll get you off on a really, really good foot. You always want to minimize those negative interactions. So if you have a rooster that's running up and he's kicking you every time you come into the run, and of course you need to come into the run, you need to tend to them, um, the main thing that you want is to not allow that interaction to deteriorate into another conflict. You want to cut that off, you want to block it however you can so that there isn't any kind of a negative outcome. So negative this, association with you, which right. has, a lot of, has a lot of research backing it. Um, birds, in general, which chickens are, um, hold grudges. They take things personally. They will remember that you hurt them. They will remember that you were angry with them. They will remember that you scolded them. It's really not much different than keeping a pet bird of another species. This is true, and not to be discouraging, because that's not to say that you can't come back from that. Um, just just that they work. pay very close attention to these things. They're using our responses all the time to determine whether we're trustworthy and whether they can feel relaxed or whether they need to try to run us off. So if you're going to be dealing with a rooster who's bad about kicking, pecking, whatever it may be, if you need him to stop for your own safety, the best thing to do in the short term is to bring, you know, just a small barrier with you. This could be the lid of a storage container. It could be a large plastic cutting board, just anything that you can put in between the two of you just to block connection to your body. So you're not shoving them with it, you're not chasing them, you're not doing anything actually threatening. It's just there to take the abuse so that you don't have to and so that they can wear out that response on something that isn't going to engage with them. That's really all that we're aiming for. If your bird is young and he doesn't have enough of spur growth to pose a danger, he's not kicking that hard, feel free to just freeze, just stand still, let him peck, let him kick, let him see that it's not necessary. That's gonna be the fastest way for that emotion to become exhausted. And you're always gonna get a better response with that than any kind of fleeing or fighting back. So the first thing that we always look to is making sure the keeper stays safe. It's always helpful to have the right attire, have thick jeans, put long socks underneath if you need extra padding, wear closed toe shoes, gloves, whatever you need to do to protect yourself so that you can stay calm and reliable and predictable so that they can see you as something they can be at ease with.
Another thing that might be helpful is to just make sure that you find some way to get some positive interaction in with them as regularly as possible. So this could mean bringing treats for them, for them to give to the hens. It could mean even spending time like we do after the sun sets. Um, we have kind of made it a habit to come and we sit in here with them every night before bed and we just give them some cheek rubs, talk to them, tell them good night, pet their backs. Uh, it's just kind of a nice little bit of time that we can spend together where they can relax and they can connect us to that happy state. And that's something that can work for people whose roosters are really visually responsive. So if they dislike things you're wearing, the way you move, your stature, anything like that, if you go in just after it's gotten dark, they're not going to see those triggers. So that might allow them to get some of that time hearing your voice, knowing it's you who's close, but feeling content seeing that you can bring something pleasant with you. So you really want to take any negative interactions that happen, you want to really try to balance and outweigh them with positive ones any way that you can and you also want to always keep in mind that you want the bird's comfort to be the number one consideration so this gets into some things that get recommended like forced affection forced cuddling so cuddling being close is wonderful forcing it gets a little bit more risky because you're sort of conditioning a scary situation right alongside that positive one um, maybe the nice one will win out, maybe it won't. So I find it's usually better to respect their boundaries, make yourself available, spend time out there and accessible, and let them see on their own that you're safe and that they can come around, and they will. And after you've done that, and they are comfortable with your presence, um, obviously you want to start picking them up and showing them that they can um, cuddle with you, but you want to let them leave immediately if they want to. So picking them up should be the extent of forced uh, affection. You pick them up, set them on your lap, and if they only stay for a split second, then that's all you get that time, and you try again the next day. And they'll eventually learn that when you pick them up, they're not trapped, that they can go anytime they want, and that will give them a, a really strong sense of security it really is invaluable for them feeling like if they needed to leave, if they needed to get away, they won't be stopped. Because um, again, we've got to keep in mind that they're prey animals, and so that means they're really tuned to react badly to certain things that in a more natural situation are likely to be really bad news. So entrapment is never a good thing in the wild. So we don't really want to replicate that unless we absolutely have to save for treatment of an injury or something. So like we had mentioned, um, there's really not a one-size-fits-all solution. There are general mindsets and general rules that are not in and of themselves going to fix the issue entirely, but they are going to get you on the right track and they're going to, more importantly, ensure that you don't do anything actively damaging. So the th main things that we can recommend are going to be those supportive measures. They're what's going to get you on the right track, what's going to help you avoid actively damaging trust or um, alienating the bird, damaging that relationship. So these are kind of your framework. These are what you want to be thinking from and what you want to be working towards as you're addressing these issues. When it comes to each individual, each circumstance, it's going to take potentially a little bit more tailoring. So we just don't want anyone to say, okay, I'm going to be patient with my rooster. I'm going to spend time with him. I'm going to reassure him. And then after a couple of weeks, they're not seeing progress. It may just be that you've uh, maybe misinterpreted what's got him upset. It may be that there's something else present, like the clothes you're wearing, that's keeping him from benefiting from that. That's not the step where you have to give up and figure it's not going to work. That's just the step where you've got to go a little back to the drawing board and say, okay, what am I missing here? So one thing that we want to make sure that people are aware of is that something we've taken to doing since getting to know these boys is working one-on-one -on -one via um, email, via messaging, on social media, wherever people can reach us, really, to try to give some one-on-one -on -one input into things that can be tried for people's specific bird and the situation they're dealing with. So, um, as I said, I wish I could just give a one-size-fits-all, one-and-done, you know, do this and your problems will be solved. That's just not realistic really for any species, but what we can do is we can say that if you're having problems, if you change up that approach and you're not seeing any progress, 
please leave a comment. Let us know what you need help with. Even if you're not looking for a companion animal, having a rooster who likes you is fun. It's a really cool experience and one that we really wish all keepers could have. We also have a Facebook group that was set up specifically to support other keepers and working through these kinds of problems. We have a lot of members there who are, you know, like some of our viewers might be, just looking for help and advice, but we have a great deal of really knowledgeable people who've worked through some really severe situations. Um, they know what works and they're more than happy to take their time to help others achieve what they were able to achieve. So please never hesitate to reach out, never feel like you're alone in dealing with this. Um, we know firsthand that roosters can be intimidating, they can be overwhelming sometimes, and it can be easy to feel discouraged, but I promise you there is light at the end of the tunnel. With the right attitude, with the right approach and understanding, they make some really incredible companions and you will be so happy that you kept them around. Thanks so much for watching. If you think that we missed anything in this video or if there's any specific issue you're dealing with, please let us know in the comments below. Maybe we can do a more in-depth video on just that. We definitely plan on making more informational videos um, in the future where we talk about different issues that we deal with, that other keepers deal with, and things that we found helpful. Um, for now, that's going to be it. Thanks. Have a good one.